fear meat. Be afraid of meat. I'm seeing that more and more lately in the headlines and in the public discourse. And my husband came home yesterday and said, hey, I just saw a USA Today headline that said that the next pandemic could be coming for meat. Commence my eye roll, but we should talk about it. So I looked it up. So before we get into it, I am Texas Donna. And if you're back here, thanks. Hello, friends. If you're new here, hang in there and see if you like this kind of a content. And if you do, hit the subscribe button if you don't mind. If you want this to show up more reliably in your YouTube news feed, that'd be terrific. Hit the like button if you like it. Comment if you have something to say. I would like to encourage interaction if you are so inclined. I am in my 50s. I am um, a carnivore that's flawed but try to be pretty good <laughs> and I am facing you know menopause and nearly empty nester and all that good stuff and so I talk about health and wellness from all of those perspectives all together and so if any of that overlaps with your experience and you want to join me in this channel I really welcome you to have a dialogue with me here on the interwebs so let's get into this now I am looking up the um, I'm looking at my iPad oh also <laughs> co-starring my steering wheel this is a car vlog okay because the sound is good. I don't have a sound studio at my house. And then there is crap in the back of my car. For those of you who are regulars, you know that I frequently co-star the crap in the back of my car, but you can't see it because of the angle of my phone now. I crochet and I'm a vendor and I always have stuff in my car related to that. So here we are in my car. All right, here we go. USA Today. Now, I didn't do their little online subscription because I'm just not in the mood for them right now. So some of the article is blocked by ads, uh, but we'll see. Um, and I don't have the editing software to kind of put everything up on the screen for you guys, but you can just Google USA Today pandemic for meat or something, and this should come up. This was an article published on July 22nd, and today is July 25th, I think. All right, so um, the headline is, the next pandemic could spring from the US meat supply, new report finds. Okay. Um, all right, the next global pandemic could come from the United States. Oh no, that's the sobering message of a report from Harvard Law School and New York University. And you hear Harvard and you know, you hear New York anything. Well, wow, that's the real deal, right? Examining how humans, livestock, and wild animals interact here. So that's the framework. Now I'm gonna, okay. That's, uh, anyway, may, many familiar and terrifying diseases. That's a quote from this article. So already be afraid. Many familiar and terrifying diseases. So you need to be afraid right now, right away, three sentences into this article. Originated in animals, including HIV, Ebola, Zika, pandemic flu, and COVID-19. Okay. I know what you're thinking and I know what I'm thinking, but I'm not going to say it because I want this video to stay up and I don't, anyway. All right, so some started in other countries, blah, blah, blah. These so-called zoonotic diseases are often blamed on poor hygiene, lack of government oversight, or unsafe practices in those places. Now, let me talk about lack of government oversight because there is an Amish farmer in, I think, Pennsylvania, something Miller, or something Miller. I, I, I can't remember his name. In any case, he, he runs a, like a little Amish farm. And let me tell you, there's no lack of government oversight with that little Amish farmer. There's a lot of government oversight with him. I used to get raw milk delivered to my house. I cannot tell you how much the raw milk uh, dairy farmer had to spend in in uh, in legal services because he was constantly being gone after by the county in which he had a farm. It was insane. We drank his milk and ate his cheese and ate his yogurt for years and years and years. It was in his business's best practices to be clean. Uh, to go by government standards, etc., and they did not leave him alone. All right, I was never afraid of that milk. So, 
lack of government oversight. Okay, so what they are wanting you to do right now, right away, is to be afraid and then to want more government oversight because that has solved so many problems. All right, so, um, okay, guy and guys, I know sometimes there's some government standards that we maybe all agree on in terms of food safety or whatever. Okay, but I'm saying that it's a problem, and when articles like this come up that terrify you first and make you afraid and they're setting you up to go along with um, intrusive government oversight into things that I don't actually want the government involved in, to tell you the truth. In any case, Americans often think it couldn't happen here. Regulations are so loose and interactions so frequent, I think with the animals, researchers found that a virus or other contagious bug could easily jump from animals to people in the U.S. sparking a deadly outbreak. It could. Did it? No. Is it? No, but it could. These are most of the types of articles that I am seeing right now. Hey everybody, here's a thing that in our imagination could happen. So be afraid. Let Okay, I'm in my 50s and I have seen a lot of fear. You know, like they start making you afraid in elementary school. Your teacher starts, they start making you afraid of killer bees. Um, that was a big deal when I was in like third, fourth, and fifth grade. Killer bees. Let's make every year in the curriculum, for some reason I cannot figure out, there was a curriculum unit on the killer bees that were going to come to the United States. And so like my little eight to 10 year old mind was like, what am I gonna do when they get here? Well, they, they got here after the pandemic, they flew up through Texas and I never saw a, a, a single killer bee and turns out they're not that big of a deal. So in any case, all that curriculum wasted on me. So. Uh, all right, now part of this article, parts of it are kind of blocked because it's got ads because I'm just absolutely refusing to subscribe. Um, but they say somebody from Harvard Law School, oh, I guess, but they focus on animal law and policy. Um, I think we're more vulnerable than ever in many ways. And then they show a, a picture of um, minks. They show a picture of, and, and those minks don't look happy, but minks aren't like, I'm not eating mink. I'm, I'm not eating mink. Uh, maybe some people eat mink, but I'm not. And I know they're making a point that the animal situation is not that good, but the, the, the headline is about meat. And the first terrifying image that comes up is mink. Well, Americans, generally speaking, we're just not eating mink. These are here for fur. And, I, you know, I don't own any mink or whatever. And I, I, I'm whatever with the mink people, but uh, they, they, they're not bringing up a, the meat supply. They're showing a horrifying picture of, of minks. Um, and then they talk about wild animal trade, imported with fewer no health risks. The thing is that, like, is this, is this an actual problem or is this like, let's invent something in our minds that could possibly be a problem and then let's write an article about it because that's what's going on here so far. Has, has there been avian flu? Yeah, but I mean, like, it, <laughs> uh, are we piled up in the streets? No. Do people get sick? Yes, people get sick, but they want you to be really, really afraid. Um, and they, they, they throw big numbers around. 10 billion land animals are raised in the U.S. Um, and I'll tell you what, something I learned from An uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee's interview with Carrie at Homestead Howe, which I finally watched last night, I highly recommend it, is that when we pasture a lot of animals, it's very, very good for the ecosystem. It's good for the land. It leads to verdant green areas because of the um, basically the animal's waste is dumped and it becomes fertilizer and that's what we need to be doing. So the more animals, the better, to be honest. Um, let's see, more blocked. Um, there's virtually no regulation of on-farm raising of animals. Um, well then why don't you leave those little farmers alone if there's no regulation? There's limited regulation of the slaughterhouse. Um, but guys, this country kind of lives on meat and and we're not dropping dead. I, 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 I really, like all of a sudden, this is an emergency. Uh, so right now the federal government is deregulating slaughter. I don't know the details of that. I don't know if that's a problem or not. Um, 
In any case, uh, studies, uh, mink, more than any other farmed species, pose a risk for the emergence of future disease outbreaks. Okay, but still, yet, I'd like to point out, minks aren't meat. They're using the raising of mink to make you afraid of meat, of like the cows and the bison that we eat and the chickens. It, it doesn't make any sense. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, I, I am scrolling through. Uh, this is bringing a dog or a cat into the country, wildlife importation. Um, then they talk about Ebola. There was two Ebola cases, I think, at Dallas County several years ago, and, and uh, people were kind of like freaked out, but like, no, only those two people got Ebola. The guy who had just been traveling and then the nurse that cared for him. All right, so um, don't we see the writing on the wall? Somebody named Winders says. Um, can't see who this person is. Um, scientists are telling us there's a looming threat of a zoonotic outbreak that could make COVID look like a cakewalk and we're still just ignoring it. Even after what we've gone through over the last couple years. Oh my gosh, person, calm down. Oh, that's the closing quote of the article. All right, so um, I hope you see this is coming. Like the, the, the this whole thing about shifting over to plant-based and the pressure to do that. And now the demonization of meat. We're going to continue to see demonization of meat. I, I guess they want us to be sick because... I'm telling you, uh, when you look in the carnivore space, um, in the groups on Facebook and the comments, just on my little channel, I've gotten hundreds of comments of people whose lives have absolutely turned around because they've increased meat and they've decreased or eliminated other food groups from their diet. And now they're finally achieving a level of healing that they never thought was possible. So. I don't know. I guess watch for more of this. And the fact is that there's no, there's absolutely no, not a shred of science in this article. Not one bit of science. There's no study. There's no nothing. There's a bunch of big numbers thrown around. And then the word could, 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 could. This could happen. This could happen. This could happen. There's a lot of that. It's full fear mongering, paranoia. And I'm not down with that. I'm not, I'm not here with that because they are apparently okay if I drink a Coke and they are okay if I go get crap in a box in the middle part of the aisles of the grocery store. They're okay with that. Mm, so y'all just be careful. I, I do encourage you to read this and to, to, to think about it yourself and to be prepared. And if you see anybody reposting this garbage, you know, we don't have to argue with everybody online on the internet, but at least be prepared with a defense if it's appropriate. Or, you know, to take apart what's wrong with this. How this is an article of nothing. It's an article of absolutely nothing. So, all right, I'm signing off. Um, this week, what I am doing is I am writing down everything I'm eating and the macros and how much it costs. I'm doing that for seven days. And then I am going to make a video and I'm going to share with you exactly what I ate and then how much it cost to eat that for seven days on a budget on the carnivore diet. And so look for that video sometime next week. Uh, my son will be coming into town back from Europe in a couple weeks. He and I will do our little discussion about addiction. My other son and I are going to do a scrambled egg cook-off at some point if we can get that together on our schedules. I'm super excited about that because he swears his scrambled eggs are better, which is, hurts, hurts my feelings, but we'll see. And and then also, if you see, I'm going to put links in the comments. I am an Amazon affiliate. If you click on any of these links, um, I, I link here things I find useful in my kitchen or of interest. Um, I get a little commission at no extra cost to you. So it does help support this channel. It helps me buy meat. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Uh, and then let me know if you have questions about any of those. I also have a link to the sleep aid uh, supplement that I took for about, I took it for about two weeks. My sleep sorted out. Um, my sleep's getting a little more wonky again because I've got some shoulder pain I'm going to be taking care of. So I'll probably start taking that sleep aid again. I know people like don't like for carnivores to suggest supplements and I really don't suggest many of them at all. But I did experience this that and it really worked and I approve of all the ingredients. So if you're having trouble with sleep, check it out. It does also help this channel a little bit if you decide you want to purchase that and you purchase it through my link. I guess that's all I have to say. So, hey, subscribe, like, hello, comment. Bye-bye.